Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Father's Day to everyone here in Forerunners for Christ Church and those that are watching us online. Happy Father's Day. Are, are you happy, fathers? Yes. <laughs> yes, we're going to hear you talk about your testimonies this morning. So we're happy to be here to listen to your messages. Amen. Um, this morning, as we remember and as we celebrate happy father's day fathers our earthly fathers we also remember our heavenly father and so this morning as we're gathered in this place let us remember and let us just give the highest praise that our father in heaven deserves for he deserves all the glory and all the praises from our hearts and from our lips amen and let us get started with revelation 4 let's read the whole chapter in NKJV here you go let's all um, read it out loud one two three after these things I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven and the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me saying come up here and I will show you things which must take place after this immediately I was in the spirit and behold a throne set in heaven and one sat on the throne and he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardius stone in appearance and there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald around the throne were 24 thrones and on the thrones i saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white robes and they had crowns of gold on their heads and from the throne proceeded lightnings, thunderings, and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Before the throne there was a sea of glass like crystal, and in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion, the second living creature like a calf, the third living creature had a face like a man and the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle let's all read it the four living creatures each having six wings were full of eyes around and within and they did not rest day and or night saying holy 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 lord god almighty who was and is and is to come Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to Him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before Him who sits on the throne and worship Him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for You created all things and by Your will they exist and were created and so father this morning we come before you and we lay down any of our crowns any of our ambitions any of our dreams before your your feet lord we surrender everything to you this morning and we come before you with a humble heart with a broken spirit to give you glory to honor you and to praise you Father be enthroned in our praises this morning Holy Spirit come have your way take leadership in this room even online live stream take leadership holy spirit have your way have your way god have your way god Live 
lifting up our hearts we bow down in praise father father we have come to bow down in worship lifting up our hearts we bow down in praise alleluia lover of our souls alleluia with all singing hallelujah
I just wanted to bring us back to verse 8 of Revelation for real quick. All the saints, all the angels were surrounding the throne of God and worships Him because He is holy. And they do not rest day or night saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Our God, He is holy. And in this chapter, it doesn't even say any other words. But holy, holy, Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things and by your will, they exist and were created. Just us is standing here in this room, coming together to worship God. We should have this excitement or this joy to just give Him all the glory that He deserves because He is holy. And as we sing this song, all the angels cry out, holy is the Lord. And this is what the angels and the saints are doing in the throne room right now. And as they cry out, holy, holy are you, Lord. All the earth also replies, holy are you, God. This church, God, replies, holy are you, God. Forerunners for Christ Church replies, holy are you, God. So as we sing this song, can we just cry out to him in the same way the angels cover their eyes as the saints put down their thrones before God and sing to him you are holy God you are worthy you are worthy to receive all glory and honor and power we sing to you you are holy to him all the angels cry holy is the Lord God all the earth replies holy are you all the angels cry holy is the Lord God all the earth replies holy are you all the angels Holy 
Just this morning, but every moment of our lives, we set our eyes and our hearts on you. That there would only be one thing that we would desire to gaze upon your beauty and your majesty. presence to inquire in your temple and to keep knowing you and searching you and discovering of who you are God we want to know you more we have not even scratched the surface of 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 what and how we know you because for many of us we have become familiar with the God that we have not even known like what Todd White mentioned and so we don't want to be familiar with you but we want to be intimate with you so that when we worship you God we worship you not just in songs not just in in melodies with our instruments with our voices but we worship you with everything that is within us God Holy Spirit we ask that you pour out your spirit of wisdom and revelation upon each and every person in this room and even those that are watching us online that we may know you in a deep and intimate way that we would intentionally choose to count all things lost compared to to the to the things of this world we would count all things lost compared to the excellence of knowing you in a deep and intimate way god father we pray that you would pour down your fiery love upon us this morning a love that will continue to burn and never die down God a love that is always passionate a love that is zealous a love that is always longing and yearning to be with you God
Father, this morning, our prayer is that we want to know you more. Show us who you are. And even in the past few weeks, God, you have already been showing us who you are with the miracles and the healings and your power and just your who you are in our lives God with Joshua with Pastor Linda for every single family member of Forerunners you have shown who you are to us God but Lord we want to know you more we just don't want to hear stories but we want to we want to know you personally This is our prayer, God, we want to know you more. This is my personal prayer. I want to know you more, God. I want to know you more, God. No. 
Yes, Father, this is our prayer this morning. To know you more. To have this deep desire to know you more. That we will not be satisfied with what we've known and what we know, but to know you more. To know you more, God. Holy Spirit, we thank you for teaching us and showing us who Father God is through His Son, Jesus Christ. We receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation to know Jesus and to know Father God in an intimate way. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father God. Because you are the Father of the fatherless. You are the Father who is compassionate, who is kind, who is loving. You are the Father who so loved the world that have to give His one and only Son to die on the cross for our sins. Thank you, Father, for every spiritual blessings that you have blessed us in the heavenly places. Thank you for your miracles. Thank you for your healing upon Joshua, upon Pastor Linda, and everyone that is sick right now. As you hear this prayer, as you hear testimonies of Joshua getting discharged this afternoon, receive your own healing. Because God, He is good and He heals. His word will never return to Him void. It shall accomplish its purpose to which, to which He has sent it. He is true to His word. He is true to His promises. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He's forever faithful. Thank you, Father God. Be glorified and be honored. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, everybody. Hello everybody, uh, so today I'm going to exhort for us, um, and my exhortation is based on um, Job, Job, right, Job, I'm sorry. Um, Job was a blameless man and a man of complete integrity, and after reading the first verse of the chapter, which says, could you put uh, Job 1 verse 1 please? It says, there was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job, and that man was blameless and upright, and one who feared God and shunned evil. And as we can see after reading the first verse, Job was a special person, someone who really desires and praises God. But uh, Job was the richest man in these certain areas. But even though he was, even though he possessed many, you know, possessions, he still owed all of his success to God and he he had strong faith in God and he didn't let the world's pleasures hold him down Job also cared about his children not only was he a father but he was somebody who really cared for his children's spiritual health and we can see in some of the verses in chapter 1 um, specifically verse 5 Job would care for his children and he would sacrifice and give offerings to God 
because he wanted his children to be pure. He wanted his children to be, you know, spiritually healthy. Um, in verses 6 to 12, Satan meets before God, and here God mentions Job, his blameless servant. Satan then asks permission to test Job, and because Satan wants to win over Job, he destroys his possessions, he destroys his sons and his daughters, he destroys many special things to him. But re really stood out to me was in verses 13 to 20. So could we put that up, please? So here in 13 to 20, Satan destroys all of Job's possessions and he destroys his sons and daughters. Now there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And a messenger came to Job and said, the oxen were pl plowing and the donkey feeding beside them. When the Sabians raided them and took away, indeed they have killed the servants with the edge of, their, of the sword. And I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was eating and still speaking, Another also came and said, The fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants, and consumed them, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, The Chaldeans formed the three bands, raided the camels and took them away, yes, and killed the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still eating, another also came and said, your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And suddenly a great wind came across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house and it fell on the young people, and they are dead. And I alone have escaped to tell you. And before we go to verse 20, okay. Well, before we read this verse, I just want us to, you know, look on these past verses and we see Job's possessions taken destroyed and also his servants murdered but then in verses 16 to um in verses 17 to 18 and 19 job's family his own family was killed and i feel like that must have you know it, it must have hit him really hard because it's his own you know children but in verse 20 we can put that up now thank you in verse 20 then job arose tore his robe and shaved his head and he fell to the ground in worship and this was really powerful oh yeah just 20 and um this really spoke out to me because even though job lost all of his possessions even though he was forced to let go of his children to let go of you know his possessions to let go of his servants he still praised god and that's why god allowed job to be tested because God knows Job's heart and he knows how he will respond. So I just, you know, want to use this as a reminder that whatever trials or tribulations we come through, it's never going to be too hard for us to overcome because God will never give us something that's too hard. And he gave Job one of the hardest things to ever, you know, come through, the loss of his children. And even though he lost his children, um, Job still came before God and he still praised God. So I feel like when we go through our trials and tribulations, we should really remember this because there's nothing more powerful and nothing more showing to the devil when we let go and we sacrifice for God, but then we come before him in praise and honor. So thank you, everybody. Amen. Um, so for our tithes and offering, um, I just want to share from Proverbs 3. Verse 9 to 10, it says here, Glorify God with all your wealth, honoring Him with your very best. With every increase that comes to you, then every dimension of your life will overflow with blessings from an uncontainable source of joy. And, you know, this is um, so true to me that when we glorify God um, with our finances, He will bring it back 
in an overflow and you know right now um i just want to thank god for for my full-time job at dot and though um Right now, I'm experiencing a um, financial breakthrough, and even two days ago, um, I just I receive a check in the mail. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's a <laughs> it's it's a it's a it's a two hundred thirty eight dollars um refund, you know. And and when I when I got it, I was like, oh, you know, God, I don't need this right now. But it says in his <laughs> But is <laughs> but it says it it says in his word, right, that every dimension of your life um will overflow with blessings you know and that's uh he wants us to experience an overflow right and he's blessing us so he can uh, so we can bless others and we can also bless him in a greater measure um and i just want to declare um offering please <laughs> offering number one because this is very true to this is very true to me right now. So let's let us just um, declare this all together. As we receive today's offering for, we are believing the Lord for jobs and better jobs, races and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail. Gifts and surprises, finding money, debts paid off, expenses decreased, blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs, that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! So, Father God, we just thank you. Um, for today and we just thank you for everyone um that will just be giving lord um i pray that um we will just continue to glorify you and to honor you with our finances lord god um and i just ask lord that um you'll you'll just continue to bless um everyone that will be giving today that we may give more into your kingdom in jesus name amen Mercy never fails me And all my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God I love you, Lord I love you Lord for your mercy never fails me and all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness all my life and all my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness I love your voice You have led me through the fire In darkest night You are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend I have lived in the goodness and all my life, and all my life, you have been faithful. And all my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will see of the goodness. And don't 
all my life And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God Your goodness Your goodness is running out running after me your goodness is running after it's running after me with my life laid down i surrender now i give you everything your goodness is running after it's running after me and all my life all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am made I will sing of the goodness Good morning, Forerunners for Christ. Happy Sunday and happy Father's Day to all the fathers of our. Good morning, Forerunners for Christ. Happy Sunday and happy Father's Day to all the fathers of uh, Forerunners for Christ. I just want to thank the Lord for allowing me to be a father of Angelo and uh, Angela. Truly, it's a blessing. And I remember before, I was just uh, praying and dreaming like one day I'll be a father. And uh, true enough, uh, the good Lord blessed me with a wife when I turned 31. And I was praying to the Lord you know, uh, I wanted to experience having a children. And I think some of you know already that, you know, <laughs> before we're thinking about having four, two boys, two girls, right? And um, one thing I want to share with you is how to be a father or how I experienced this kind of responsibility as a child of God and as a father of Angela and Tim. Uh, it's not that easy uh, for the things that I experienced before. There were some, uh, let's say, question also, like how to really be a good father because like what we all know, there's no uh, guide or kind of like instructions on how to be a father. It kind of like, you know, a relationship between the Lord and you and having this kind of wisdom from the Lord on how to um, take care of your children. So for, for me, I'm not a perfect father. Definitely, there are a lot of um, things that I need to work on. But I thank God for bringing me to this church and for allowing me to really... Uh, know him, know Jesus in my life and I can consider that uh, my children are blessed also having me as a father. Why? It is because I am trained and I am part of Foreigners for Christ which I think that's one of the uh, uh, greatest things I experienced uh, being a Christian and at least I have this kind of um, community or let's say a body of Christ that will truly enhance and allow me to uh, mature as a believer of Jesus Christ and as a father uh, to my children. Um, I said a while ago it's not easy. It's because at the end of the day, the future of our kids, the future of Angelo and Tintin, uh, is important for us, for me as a father, and for Marilyn and I as a parents, and for our kids. 
it is important for them to uh, really see the future right but since we we cannot really see our future uh, from this time right so I can see the future of my kids as uh, uh, a fruitful one it is because they are growing in the Lord and uh, the presence of Lord Jesus Christ in their lives uh, truly allow them to grow also and mature as a believer of Jesus Christ the body of Christ the foreigners for Christ truly um, uh, God is using utilizing for me to be able to really guide my children and I would like to thank also my kids Angelo and Tintin for listening to me as a father there are some you know um, questions sometimes there are kind of like not arguing but there are some you know some things that you, do, you don't agree 100% but at the end uh, they will listen and they will you know uh, they will consider that uh, advice you know but of course there are some advices that probably they did not follow but then again the good thing is they know the Lord Jesus Christ and having Angelo uh, be part of the worship team actively uh, allows me to really have this kind of grateful heart to the Lord because I know my son is truly loving the Lord Jesus and I also would like to thank Tintin uh, she is a shy type person but I know deep inside her heart she wanted to know more Jesus Christ she wanted to really experience the greatness of Jesus Christ and I know she's there it's just like she cannot express but uh, I know for a fact that she has this kind of devotion she has this kind of relationship with the Lord but that's one thing I'm still praying uh, not only for her but for everybody for our uh, young generation but since I'm speaking for my kids as a father really I'm thankful to the Lord for allowing me uh, to be a father of Tintin and Angelo and that is one thing I'm thankful for the Lord because he gave me this kind of opportunity to really share Jesus also in their lives and vice versa I'm learning from them as well you know from Angelo from Tintin uh, there are times that they will correct me also if there are things that uh, not really in accordance with the Lord they will tell me uh, in my face like you know with respect definitely they're telling me that this is not right and everything like that so I thank God for allowing me to have this kind of heart also to be uh, to have this kind of listening heart also uh, from my children and with that uh, kind of relationship definitely uh, there's like uh, growth in me and at the same time there is a good relationship between my kids and myself so yeah just one thing I want to share with everybody and um, let's keep on praying for our young generation at the end of the day uh, the good Lord Jesus uh, wants everybody to be uh, actively involved uh, with his ministry and this church is uh, helping us to really allow our kids my kids to have that kind of relationship with the Lord so of course uh, not only um, myself or my kids I, I also would like to thank my my wife for partnering with me in growing our children Angela and Tintin so for Angela and Tintin I just want to thank you for everything thank you for the heart that you have for the Lord continue serving the Lord and uh, thank you for always being there uh, to support Papa and Mama uh, whenever we ask you something you're there to help us out and thank you for the heart that you have for the Lord continue serving the Lord and us what we are always talking about prioritize the Lord right in Matthew 6 33 seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you so whenever we have issue whenever you have issue in school or personal issue just always you know prioritize God and that's my prayer for you and for us to really prioritize the Lord and really seek the Lord and allow the love of the Lord to really penetrate in our heart and manifest in us so once again for Tintin and Angelo thank you so much for loving me
Thank you so much for being part of my life and continue um, listening to the Lord and just continue serving Him with all your heart. Again, I am here to help you, to assist you, to support you, and always remember that Papa loves you so much. Okay, so thank you so much. And once again, happy Father's Day to all the fathers of uh, Forerunners for Christ. God bless everyone. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Being a father is a very special to me. I take this responsibility seriously. My kids are my treasure. Their pain are my pain. Their joy is my joy. Their sadness are my sadness. Being a father is a special gift from God. Along the way, I also make mistakes to my kids. Sorry to you, Emil, Amiya, and Ayan if I do hurt your feelings sometimes. Daddy is not an expert of being a father, but this can I assure you guys that I love you very much, that I will do my very best to provide for all your needs. I will be diligent on knowing the Word of God so that I can learn how to be a father according to God's instructions to me. Again, I love you, Emil, Amiya, and Ayan. And to my lovely wife, thank you for understanding me and my witnesses and celebrating with me on my success. I love you guys again. Happy Father's Day, everyone. I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. I see. I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life.
Good morning, everyone, and happy Father's Day to all the fathers right here. And for those tuning in online, uh, for all the fathers, happy Father's Day. I really want to thank the Lord uh, for this opportunity to become a father. I never dreamed to become one, but, you know, God, God is so good. God is so good. Uh, growing up, I really never experienced the love of the father. And, but I thank the Lord because, you know, in, in my later life, I get to know my dad um, uh, before, before he passed away. But then again, you know, just the opportunity raising up four lovely kids you know, it's just, you know, I will not trade it for anything else. Um, I keep on saying what my kids are my life and they, they are joy and joy to me. And I never, never uh, in my life that I, I think about all the, the responsibilities that it takes uh, to become a father, the, the, the trials and the hardship in raising up uh, kids because it's truly a joy just just being with them and seeing uh, raising them up and just being a part of their life is just it's just truly an amazing feeling and you know all I, I remember them growing up and just be with them I remember even my wife who never liked sports really enjoy just being there and cheering for our kids and and those are the times I, I you know I, I will always stress you you know the times especially when games on the line and you're like you are like you know like like rooting for your your kids and and just just being there and and being a part is you know it's just I will not trade it for anything I I, I don't even I, I don't even think you know all those those times that I have to drive them to different places all over, just, you know, and I just love what my bro uh, my sister-in-law uh, wrote in their chat. Um, she said, anyone can be a father, but not everyone can be a dad. And that is very true, you know, because especially in this new uh, uh, young, uh, generation wherein a lot of people doesn't want to even have kids because of the responsibilities that is uh, that's attached to it. And... You know, it, 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 if you really think about it, you know, you know, it, it will, you know, your, your, it will change your lifestyle when you have kids. But for me, that is the most wonderful thing that ever happened to my life, just being a, being a father and now being a grandfather to three wonderful kids and just like being a brand new dad again, looking forward to see them because like, you know, they live far away and just looking forward to see them and, and I really thank the Lord, um, you know, not not only for being a father, but you know, but knowing who God is in my life even before raising them up, and you know, it's the Word of God that uh, truly help us to understand who we are in the Lord. And the Bible says, like, train up a child to where he should go, and when he grows old, he will not depart from it. And truly, Lord, I was so thankful. I just love this song, the evidence of his goodness all over my life because all my kids now are all grown up and just seeing them, you know, seeing these two boys, you know, uh, still uh, being used by the Lord and, and, and worshiping God and putting God first in their life is such an amazing, you know, I, I'm just so thankful. And of course, it helps a lot when you have a partner, a wife that, you know, it's always there reminding us the things of God, always, you know, uh, doing, uh, putting uh, God in the center of everything in your life, that really helps. And I'm just grateful for this time that, uh, you know, even even now that we are old, that uh, we can still pray together and like, you know, like having fellowship and just really having that good relationship with one another is, you know, I, I, I just won't trade it for anything else. And I just want to thank the Lord. And, you know, uh, be before I, I kind of worried uh, about uh, about my 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 kids' uh, future because you know we don't know. But now my wife keep on t uh, she keep on saying it. You know, when you have God, you have everything. And so now we know 
that even their future, uh, we know that uh, it, 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 uh, there are, you know, it's, it's going to be settled because, you know, they have God with them. And it's, you know, the, just um, being with God all the time and, and putting God first in their life, I know everything's going to be all right. And I thank the Lord for this opportunity that once again I can be a dad and thank everyone. God bless you all. Hi, good morning, everybody. First of all, I would like to greet every father's <laughs> Sorry for interruption. <laughs> okay. Good morning, everybody. I would like to greet everybody this morning. <laughs> My voice is loud enough. I... Another interruption. Sorry. <laughs> I would like to greet everybody for Father's Day today. Okay. And I have one most uh, testimony this morning. I truly thanks God for uh, giving Joshua a second life. Because truly, God is good, and He is God of miracle. He made impossible possible, and He made a way. Like He said, He will never leave us or forsake us. That's why he stood beside my son till he woke up. And when he woke up, my son, to see all God's creation, to see it once again, so I thank God for everything. We owe his life to the Lord. And I thank everybody for the prayers for my son. And uh, this is my testimony for having been a father. As uh, my two boys was born, when they start going to school as a kindergarten, uh, me and my wife used to take them to the park only. And then when they are old enough to walk a long way, every weekend we used to take them to a trail walk and having lunch in the mountain and everything. And that's the most memorable moment in my life. That's the time when you can enjoy your kid when they were little. Because when they grow up, go to high school, and then they're pretty much big and everything, they won't, they won't let even you. They won't even let you give them a kiss or a hug because they are, they think they are grown up already. So, you know, being a father, I enjoy most of their life when they were little. <laughs> so now. They're all grown up. I thank my wife for standing by me to raise my kid the right way. Thank you very much. So, Josh, hey, Jeremy, you can start packing your bags. You can leave now. Anyway, anyway, I'm, I'm so glad. Blessed that we were able to come here today and spend this Father's Day time with all the rest of you guys. And before I start, I'd like to greet everybody, man, happy Father's Day. And those who are going to be fathers, good luck. <laughs> anyway, no, I was just kidding. It's, a great, it's great to be a father, right? There's a lot of difficulties, there's a lot of trials, as Brother Bear was saying. There's no blueprint 
There is no manifest. There is no manual on how to raise, how to raise a kid. Speaking of that, I would like to take Ephesians 6, 4, where it says, oh, Ephesians 6, 4, it says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath or anger, but, uh, but bring, them, bring them up in the training of in the instructions and discipline of the Lord. That works very great with me. Okay. I have, everybody as a father have different narrative, different storyline in their life, right, on how to raise a kid. And I have a different one. My kid, if you all know, let me go back years, years and years ago, when I was young, and we had, I only have one kid, and Unfortunately, as a Filipino family, Filipino family, I have to leave my kid and work outside of the country because we have to make sure that he's well financially stable. In a way, we have to provide whatever we can in our own little right, right? And the, the best part there is we left him in a good environment. I left him with my sister who is a Christian. So I know that foundation with my son is there already. So we didn't ever see him grow up. We got to really spend time with him, with him when he came to America when he was 11. And it's a diff difficult transition because now when he came here, all those the things that were given to him on how to be raised and how to be how to grow up where relationship with mom and dad is like very close like brother Johnny was saying when they were young they like to embrace they like to hug they like to kiss you right they are part of the family but then when they grow when he came back when he came to America at 11 years old going through teenage teenage years there was this transition of rebellion so me being not a Christian, I was imposing my will the way I want, I thought it was. Because I was grasping, as I've said, there's no blueprint, there's no manual. So I was grasping at instructions from people of the world on how to, reach, to, to raise my son. And there was a lot of fighting, there was a lot of argument, there was a lot of talking back and forth. But he never, I never raised a hand on my son. He never answered me back in a way that I would be up, very upset. Make story short, I became a Christian. And things changed. Because now I'm more, more calmer. I'm more, I have God in my heart. So I slowly introduced God to him. And with the help of my wife, uh, we were able to, to really dig into the previous foundation that he has and bring it out. And as I've said, we have different narratives in life. And I thank God that my narrative, he outgrow all the bad things that he was getting. It's a great narrative for a father. Because you don't want your son going the wrong way, or worst part, leaving the world before you as a father leave the world. You always want the best for your son. And children are a blessing from God. So we should take care of that. So uh, closing, I, what I can leave to the uh, future fathers is partner with God. Partner with God. But the partnership should not be like the, the, the parable that we heard. 99, 98%, 99% to God. It should be 100% leave it to God. So we can only be helped by God if we allow God to help us. We cannot limit God. We cannot limit Him. He knows what's... what's as, as Father, as God the Father... He only wants the best for his children. That's what we want as well for, for, for our children. So, 
that's what I can live and always train him. So as as we became born again Christian, train him and instruct him the way God wants us. What? Want you to do it. So in that word, I'd like to thank everyone, fathers and future fathers. It is great to have kids. It's easy to be. It's easy to be a father, but being a father is difficult. Being a father is difficult. It takes responsibility, it takes accountability, and it takes the love of God to do it. Father has our own, uh, we have partners in life, right? Our mother, uh, the, our was husband and wife. Mothers, are not, uh, they nurture the kids. We, as fathers, provide for the kids. And the best one we can do is like get God as our backup. Uh, not a backup, but our, our partner in, in everything that we have to do. So happy Father's Day to all those fathers and future fathers. God loves you. Get God on your side. Amen. Hi. Good morning to everybody. I just take this chance to come in front to say uh, happy fathers to all the fathers. I'm so blessed that I have uh, two children, Jeremiel and Mariel. I love them very much, and I, when they grow up, I teach them the best what I can do to them, so they're gonna grow up in the knowledge of God. Of, the, of God. So sometimes. It's hard to come to the church because it's so far. But because of my daughter, she's very faithful to serve the Lord. So I decided to bring her every Saturday. And I really love it. And then I'm so happy again that my boy come back to this church. To this church because before he, did, he, he didn't want to come in here because I don't know why but because of my wife he talked to him every time and said I, I and I believe because of my wife he explained everything to him that there's no tr triumphant of his uh, life without of Jesus Christ. Thank you.
And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God Happy Father's Day <laughs> to all the fathers out there. Um, and I want to give a special shout out to my father over there that I am thankful uh, for you. I'm thankful for your life. I'm thankful for um, just how you've raised us as children all these years. And uh, you heard him speak uh, just a short time ago. And uh, he, he talked about how he didn't get close with his father until a little bit later uh, in his life when he was already an adult with, with a family. And I remember um, hearing from my dad uh, just his heart of when he grew up, when he had a family, uh, he wanted to be very present in our lives. He really wanted to make sure that he was always there for his children, uh, to love them, to listen to them, to talk to them. Um, because he didn't really have that growing up. And I'm so thankful uh, that he decided to do that. And he has been so faithful with that. I, I've been so blessed because uh, when I was born, my dad was already impacted by the Lord. Um, and people say that they, they see God as a father, depending on how they see their own father. Uh, they, they, they kind of, you know, put that picture of, of God as the father through their earthly father. And, and I'm so blessed because my father uh, had already loved the Lord by the time I was born. And so I got to see the love of Christ through the way that he loved us. Uh, I was able to identify God um, a little bit more clearly because of the way that he provided for us, that he showed his compassion and his care for us, even when uh, we weren't always the greatest <laughs> when, whenever uh, we would uh, mess up. He was still there. He was still there to listen. And I remember very clearly um, when I was in middle school, my dad would drive me to school every day and he would pick me up. Um, and I feel like that was the beginning of me kind of just opening up and talking to him. And I realized very quickly, uh, it didn't matter if he was having a good day. It doesn't matter if he was having a bad day, whether he was really happy with me, proud of me, or whether he was really disappointed and, uh, and upset with something that I did. But no matter what, he was always there to listen. He, he was always there to talk to me. I could talk to him about something he completely wasn't interested in, and, and he would be 100% focused on what I was saying. Uh, he would listen to me, and, and we would talk about all the things of life. And up until now, since that time in middle school to till now, many, many years later, uh, he's still there to listen to my, to my stories, to listen to my day, um, to correct me when I need correction uh, and to support me when I need support. And he talked about um, our family supporting at, you know, sports games and all this kind of stuff. And I just remember every single time uh, looking into the audience, uh, seeing my dad and just hoping that I was making him proud. I, I always had that in my, in my head, like whenever uh, he would come to the game, like I, I hope I'm making my dad proud. And uh, thankfully, he, he was, even when I wasn't doing so good, uh, he would tell me that he's proud of me. And so I'm thankful, Dad, uh, for, for you. I'm thankful for your heart, for your love for all of us. It's seen in us. It's seen especially in your grandchildren. Uh, you love them very much. And, and I can only pray and hope that I will be a dad as loving as you were. So happy Father's Day. Hey, Dad. <laughs> Happy Father's Day. Uh, yeah, just like what Kuya said, um, we're just thankful for all that you do for our family. You, just like Mom, you're a really hard worker, and you do your best to provide for all of us, for all of the family. Um, even when there's, like, things, that, like, like chores that need to be done or, like, something that need, needs help with, uh, he would come to ask us, but 
when you would see that if we're like busy with something or preoccupied or even just like tired, he would he'd be like, Oh, it's it's fine. I, I can do it myself. He would always just like try to always ease the burden on us and just um I really uh I really appreciate that that trait of yours. That's um something I wanna like take up with myself for my family one day. Um just the love that you have for all of us. Um just thank you for all that you you do just by being in our lives. You're always so supportive in what we do. Uh, even like we said, even when we're not uh, the best, uh, when we're not like at our best of times, you still love us and you're still understanding and you're just always wanting the best for us. And you're just always there to help and support us. So, love you, Dad. Hello, Father. And other fathers, uh, I just want to say happy Father's Day to to all the fathers here. I love you guys so much, and I'm so blessed to have you a part of my life. But um, yeah, special shout out to my dad, who who just spoke earlier and made Patricia cry. <laughs> I'm I'm just thankful for you for all that you've done. Really, um, I know growing up it's a bit challenging with me and my brother, especially I guess even now, and. I can't, I can't promise that it won't continue to be challenging, but um, I'm just thankful for all that you've taught me, all that you've trained me in, especially a lot of these things that I wouldn't have learned in school or wouldn't have learned otherwise. I'm so thankful for that, even though I know at the times that you were telling me or teaching me these things, I had no interest in at all, but there's so many things I do, even in my daily life, um, and even here, things here in the church that I've learned from you, and I'm so thankful for that. And I do love you so much, even though I don't tell you a lot. And um, I do want to say, if you ever need a hug or um, a kiss, I got you. Thank you, Dad. I love you. I want to go fishing. Come fishing with us. All of us on a pier. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Marielle. I'm my dad's daughter. Wait. <laughs> I'm your guys' brother, Mark's daughter. Um, I just want to say I love you, Dad. Thank you so much um, for raising me and my brother. And as you guys heard earlier during his um, sharing, um, during Mother's Day, I shared my mom thanking her because she said it didn't matter the cost or gas prices or mileage. But I thank my dad because he's the one who's actually driving the car while everyone sleeps sometimes on the ride there. Um, and for his commitment, for also um, spending his time, you know, two or even four hours just to bring us here and to go back. Um, and I know it's not always easy, especially because, you know, you're getting older and you have stuff with your eyes. Um, and I also want to thank him because um, this year, my dad um, is the reason <laughs> for why I got my driver's license, because he's taken the time to teach me and to train me. Um, and I know that raising me and my brother isn't the easiest. I know that I'm not little anymore, so I'm not always that into, like, like I'll always into, like, hugs and kisses. <laughs> but um, growing up, my mom always tells me, you know, me and my brother are, like, like my brother's always the cool baby, and I'm always, like, the fiery baby, <laughs> that kind of thing. So if my brother's um, ice and I'm fire, then it's, like, you know, sometimes me and my dad clash a lot, um, which is why my dad's um, also been teaching me a lot about... Um, you know, like pride and humility and how to humble myself with him. But even more so, I just it was able to see like God that way because of you. Because every day my mom's at work. So my dad is the one who, you know, he's always at home. And I'm like, my dad's a real man because it doesn't matter. Um, because in the old days, people were like, oh, that's like a woman's kind of thing. But my dad's been so faithful towards my family and my brother and, my, um, and myself for always, like, you know, like cooking or even like cleaning and stuff like that. And so we just really appreciate all that you do um, for us. Um, we love you, Dad. And happy Father's Day to all the fathers out here as well. I love you guys so much. And for everything that you've done, not just for me, but for all of the YGs here, like everything that you guys see right now is because of the things that you given the time that you given the prayers that you've um, given to us right now today um thank you guys hello <clears throat> 
sorry. Um, my dad isn't here because he worked uh, a, a, a what is it called? A night, a night shift. Yeah, but I'm just really thankful because it really shows how committed he is to you know taking care of his family and you know trying to provide for us. And I'm also really thankful because my dad is really funny. Like, um, you know, my sister bakes and uh, she uses an ingredient called flour. But my dad likes to call it the floor. <laughs> so when we have no more flour, he's like, no more floor. There's no more floor. <laughs> and he always knows how to make me and my family laugh. Um, and I'm also thankful because he's also really spontaneous and he's also, you know, he also trusts the Lord a lot with um, the plans he has for my dad. And after, you know, my dad gets something from God, he's always like ready to obey like right away. And I feel like that's impacting me and my siblings a lot to show us that, you know, once God gives us something, we should be always ready to obey. And, you know, that there's a lot of, you know, testimonies I can share about that, like the van. Um, this week, we're going to be going to San Francisco and we're going to be able to carry 12 people in this van because my dad obeyed and we also have um a new store that I can you know come and visit from time to time that's like you know five minute walk from my house with discounted offers for me and my family <laughs> and that's because my dad obeyed um and he also found um a new job which he's really excelling in a job that is a little farther from our house, but a job he really enjoys and a job where he can work proper hours instead of, you know, overworking himself. And I'm really thankful for that because he also wants to spend time with his family. So I'm just really thankful for how committed my dad is to his family and to God and really showing that through his life. So, yeah. Happy Father's Day, Daddy. Thank you for always taking care of us and for always baking us breakfast, even though you just got back from work. Happy Father's Day, Daddy. Uh, I was going to say what Adam was going to say. <laughs> Uh, amen. Um, since it's Father's Day, I just want to share um about um Father. Sorry, I just want to share about um Father God. Um, so one day I was um wiping the floor in our house because I was cleaning, and then um I was reminded of this dream from June eighth, um, twenty twenty one. I'm just gonna read it. Um, there was a house. And there is a father and a son. The father is Father God. And because of the wickedness of the son, you know, he stay because the, the floor in the house is made of um, glass. And um, because of the wickedness of the son, he stained the glass floor that the glass becomes so cloudy and not transparent anymore. So the son, you know, he didn't even clean the mess that he did. And on top of that, he, he ran away and he left his father with all the mess. And then suddenly, you know, I saw um, I saw Father God on the floor, um, just cleaning the dirt with his own hands, and you know, his hands um is getting di dirty while wiping all this this stain that his son left. And you know, Father uh, Father God didn't stop wiping, and he keep on wiping and wiping and. While wiping, you know, I can I can feel um his heart. Um, that he loves his son so much, you know, that even though he didn't ask for forgiveness, you know, he already forgave his son um, in his heart. And I just want to declare um, who he is, you know, as a father. And it says in Psalms 100, uh, 103 verse 8, um, it says there, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger. And abounding in mercy. Um, verse 9. 
Um, he will not constantly accuse us nor remain angry forever. He does not punish us for all our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. Verse 11, For His unfailing love toward those who fear Him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. He has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. For he knows how weak we are. He remembers we are only dust. Our days on earth are like grass, like wild flowers we bloom and die. The wind blows and we are gone as though we had never been here. But the love of the Lord remains forever with those who fear him his salvation extends to the children's children of those who are faithful to his covenant and of those who obey his commandment and so you know um today we're celebrating father's day and i just want want to continuously declare um who father god is that you know like what it says in the word that his love um is unfailing um to his children um the love of the Lord remains forever to those who fear Him. And I just want um, for all of us to remember that today, that He is such a loving Father, you know, that regardless of um, our, sh- our shortcomings, um, regardless of um, our imperfections, you know, He's, he's loved us regardless. And yeah, I just, wanna, I wa- I just want all of us um, to remember that this morning. So yeah, amen. And I just want to bring remembrance to Pastor Ness, who just as much as a mother Pastor Linda is to us, he is just as much as a father and to all of us. So again, I just want to thank all the fathers here today, all the fathers that are you know out there. Um, we love you so much. And of course, to Father God, thank you for all that you do, with all that you continue to do and all that you will do for us. We love you so much. Amen. And I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard a tender whisper of love in the dead of night as you tell me that you're pleasing that I'm alone You're a good, good Father It's who you are It's who you are It's who you are And I'm loved by you It's who I am It's who I am It's who I am And I've seen many searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers, only you provide, cause you
I can hardly speak Peace so unexplainable I can hardly think as you call me Deeper still as you call me Deeper still as you call me Deeper still into love Love, love, love You're a good, good father It's who you are It's who you are It's who you are And I'm in love It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am, you're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. Father, we thank you that you're such a good, good father. And in the midst of chaos on the earth, the very sovereign, you are perfect very mighty in all thing that we can way. think and see. You are perfect and in all of your ways. But you're such you a father. You are perfect in all of your ways. You're such a good, good father. There's really no definition for your goodness. We really haven't you even really understood the all of, your ways. of who you are. You are and I'm wondering why even when Jesus you said to the disciples, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And uh, at the get-go, you might think that Philip was just being dull or something. But actually, I noticed that it was a deep cry in the heart of Philip, in the heart of the disciples. And even if, even when they have, I, I believe they've seen the Father in Jesus, there's still a need for all of us to understand, to imbibe, to experience the depth of the heart of our Father God. And even in, we see around us, you know, fathers getting reckless and getting careless, getting lost and getting just messed, messed up. But I do know the heart of a father will bring a revival into the hearts of the earthly fathers. That as we continue to pray and as we continue to uphold the fathers in our midst, as we continue to appreciate them, as they continue to, to really take the word of God seriously, thoughtfully, allowing the power of the gospel to the Son, Jesus Christ, who personify the very heart of God as a father, as a son, as a person, as a people. And so my prayer today, before I kind of wrap up this service, is for fathers to return to the love of their children and for the children to begin to express their love for their fathers. I know that there's going to be a revolution happening because God promised in Malachi, Malachi, what is it, 4, verse 6. He's going to send the spirit of Elijah on the earth. And it is coming. We're seeing men and women being raised as parents in the church. We're seeing men, like the men, the fathers in our church, being raised up. I was so blessed. Your testimony, Mark, Thank you so much for uh, 
that testimony for Johnny, for June, for Brother Bear, for uh, who else? Uh, Brother Ted. And I do miss my husband, you know, but uh, I do know that uh, he's happy where he is. And so, Father, I thank you for your father's heart. And I thank you that the bigness of your heart is able to allow the whole world to be enclosed in that heart. And that's why I so love that word, enlarge my heart. I want it, increase, let me contain it. The depths of my heart, the depths of my heart. Let me know you, Father God. And this is our prayer. I mean, I've had a challenging night last night and the past few days, but hey, I said, while well, I was in the emergency last night, I said, Father, I'm supposed to talk about your father's heart tomorrow. And I want to impart that to the fathers, whether they know it or not, let them, let this word be declared and let your glory be made known. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. And um, I'm just going to be <laughs> audio for you today. And uh, I just want to briefly, I know it's already 12, 12, 11, and I'm not going to be long, but I just want to uh, reiterate and I want us to continue to, to get deeper into an understanding of the Father heart of God. And I know that Jesus came to save the lost, to save the world, but most specifically, really, Jesus came to reveal the Father's heart, who the Father is what the Father is about, how he loves us. And uh, when you and I go back to Genesis, you begin to see in that the, the God of Genesis 1 really just prepared everything completely, all those six days, because on the seventh he rested, all the six days, was uh, all the five days actually, it was all preparation for this man, this love, of his heart that he is going to make. And, and the three of them, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, they said, let us make man into our image, to our likeness. And let, them, let us give them dominion, authority on the earth. And, you know, sometimes we just gloss over that. We just read through that. And we fail to park there and really understand that in the beginning, already you can see the Father heart of God. And it is so powerful. And yet, you know, we fail to really comprehend what that is. And so along the way, uh, forget and make little of uh, who he is. But aside from God being creator, being great, being mighty, one of the things that really distinguishes him is his God and he's a father. And that's why in the Hebrew, when they say Abba, Abba is such an affectionate title for Father God. And uh, whenever we say Abba, like when you say Daddy, or when you say Papa, when you say Tatai to your physical, uh, you know, natural father, it is a, an endearment. It is such a, an expression of your love and honor and, and, and our respect for this father. And, and, you know, a lot of the fathers today in our lives are not uh, uh, respected because they're not respectful. They're not deserving respect as they act the way they are acting. But you know what? Let us continue to believe and let us continue to trust God that the father, his father's heart is going to surround, is going to flood the earth as the water covers the sea, I know the knowledge, the glory of the Lord shall flood the earth as the water covers the sea. And that knowledge includes specifically the heart of our Father God. And Jesus walked the earth expressing the character, the nature, the love, the desire of his Father. 
He did nothing except the father told him. He did nothing except the father led him. He did nothing except he saw the father do it. And that's the kind of honoring. And that's the kind of character that the, that the, the fa father God has shown through Jesus Christ. That there's so much respect for each other. And uh, my, uh, I will just have a short one for us. You know, Jesus revealed the father. And I wanted just to go a little bit there. Um, Jesus came to reveal the father to the human race and to offer a relationship with them. That's the number one thing. And Jesus came to the earth to be an offering for our sin and to reveal the personality of the father to the human race. And, and as, as time is evolving even now, this revelation is continually happening, uh, specifically, most specifically for us who believe, for us who continue to press on to see who the Father is. And uh, I'm, I'm going to just, um, uh, Jeremy, if you can just put this over, over here, uh, verse John 14, 7 to 9. I mean, this is, you know, I may just kind of park here. If you had known me, this is, this is what Jesus is saying to the disciples. You would have known my father. And this is what I was alluding to earlier in the prayer. Philip said, Lord, show us the father. And it is sufficient for us. And of course, Jesus kind of, uh, I think the few times that we would have read this, especially the ver verse 9, uh, we would say, what's wrong with you, Philip? Because that's that's how it sounded. He he said he who uh, and Jesus, because he said, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient. And Jesus said, He who has seen Him, He has seen me, has seen the Father. And so it seems like, Hey, Philip, what are you doing? What are you thinking? What's this all about? But I really believe because when I was when I was. Um, meditating on this, I, I began to see when Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. Like I said, it seems like the statement from Philip was an unbelief statement to, to unbelief statement to just a deep cry. It is a deep cry. I believe it, it's, it has some tone of unbelief, but at the same time, behind that statement is a deep, deep cry to really know the Father. And I really believe this cry should be heard from us. This cry, not in unbelief, but in a desire to really know Father God. Show us the Father. Show us the Father. Father, show yourself to the fathers on this earth. Show yourself to the men on this earth. Show him how that your son chose to totally and completely obey you. It is a deep cry. It is a deep cry for me. Even last night when I was at the emergency, I, I was really contending. I was fighting the good fight of faith. I was speaking to that blood pressure to bow its knee in the name of Jesus. My son was there with me in the emergency, and I asked him to read to me, I think, three or four times, Psalm 91, with emphasis on verse 14, 15, towards the end. And, um, you know, I was just, it was a fight, because my blood pressure was like 220, and it wasn't coming down, and so on and so forth. And, um, but I know, I said, Father, tomorrow, I'm supposed to be in church, and I'm supposed to talk about your father's heart. And it is an important message, not just because it is Father's Day, not just because we're trying to, we're celebrating the fathers and that too. But really what I'd like to, to share today, what I'd like for this message to do today is to really dig deep into our heart and begin to really cry from the very depths of our heart, Father, Lord, show us the Father. Show me the Father. I know that you guys sang it today, and that was beautiful. But it got it, it, this is. I believe that the return of the fathers to their children is a a a move of God, and this will be premised by us as the Church of Jesus Christ to 
be able to see Father God in the midst of uh, this chaotic world, this uh, the things that are happening today on this earth. So uh, think, I think that the conversation uh, ensuing that it was a miss a, a missing the statement kind of perception, you know, my kind of thing, and at uh, at, at that uh, at the same time a deep need unrealized but it's now steered by the statement Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. And so we continue to look at Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, the Alpha and the Omega, Jesus the healer, Jesus the Savior, Jesus the shepherd, Jesus the deliverer, Jesus the bridegroom, king, and judge. Jesus is coming back. Jesus once died and now he is alive forevermore. And he is the firstborn amongst the brethren. And Jesus is getting ready to return and posting himself, posturing himself right there at the door. And Father God is watching his people. He's watching the church, watching his, the congregation and see, are you deeply crying for his return? Are you deeply re re readying yourself for his return? Because your readiness will accelerate his return. Your readiness will allow me to send him back there to bring restoration, to bring this restore back the whole earth into my original plan, into my original design. That's the Father's heart. Father, we thank you that you think of us that you love us. I remember Jesus saying, you know, the Father loves you in the same way he loves me. And Jesus loves us in the same way the Father loves us. And that is so powerful. And us being forerunners for Christ and have this mission and vision to, of the first and the greatest commandment to love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all of your strength. And the second greatest commandment to that you love your neighbor as you love yourself. This is very, this is our message. And this message is what the messenger is all about. And so today I am, uh, the need to see Jesus is the need to be able to see the Father. And so the more we are engaged with Jesus, the more we are intimate with him, the more Jesus becomes real to us in every facet of our lives, in every juncture of our lives, we begin to see um, uh, the Father in him and through him. And as we see the Father, we, we destroy the spirit of, uh, of, of orf the orphan spirit that has been on the earth, that has destroyed the, the masculinity of the men that has been raised in the midst of us. So if we understood Jesus' teaching, mission, and personality, then we would know the Father. To read the gospel, Gospels and interpret them accurately is to know the Genesis 1 God as our Father. As we study the Gospels, to see what Jesus said and did, we learn about the personality of the Father. Amen. So Jesus' personality Ministry and teachings were profoundly attractive to the disciples. Why? Because they enjoyed being in his presence. So he taught that if, if they knew the Father, Jesus taught that if they knew the Father, they would see the same attractiveness in his personality. They would tremble before God's great powers, creator, but would have all confidence in God's presence because of his great affection affections as a father so over here in john 17 26 let's just reiterate and i will end shortly uh jesus said as i have declared to them your name and will declare it uh, we also as people of god will continue to declare the name of the father in jesus name so the holy spirit at this point in time as we've been studying acts and the book of Acts, and the power of the book of Acts, and the power manif powerfully ma powerful manifestation of the Holy Spirit through the apostles, through the believers, and, and, and bringing us into a place where we begin to see, wow, God, you really have sent the Holy Spirit to help us, not to do a job for us, 
but to help us do the job that we are assigned to do. So Holy Spirit helps us cry out to the Father. This is a deep cry. That's why that song enlarged my heart. I want it. Increase. Let me contain it. For the depths of my heart, I open up. To the depths. I don't know if that's the lyrics, but that's how I say it. And this is the cry of the Holy Spirit inside of us. To the Father. See the Father. So the Holy Spirit reaches to God through us as the spirit of adoption. Crying Abba. Again, there's that word, Abba. Abba. Abba is a term of endearment like Papa. Like I said earlier, respect, affectionate, and intimate. And you know, today in the busyness of time, just like what Ted was saying, sometimes, you know, it's, it's really, it's, it's right. It's difficult to be a father. But you know what? We have this opportunity where God is showing us himself through Jesus Christ. And as we begin to allow ourselves to absorb and encounter the Father's heart through Jesus Christ, intimacy, our intimacy through Jesus Christ, we will begin to understand how it is to be a father. We will begin to understand how it is to be a parent. We will begin how to understand what it is to be a believer. We will begin to understand what it is to be a getting ready bride. And so Romans 8 tells us, we receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. So the spirit of adoption is the person of the Holy Spirit. All right, so let me just end here. And uh, thank you everybody for today, uh, all the fathers. Uh, if you just stand there, you know, just... Uh, uh, stand in a congregation. I know you can't see me, but maybe I'll just turn on my my video. Let me pray for all the fathers. You will just stand, and then let us remember some of the fathers that we know, like um, your friends' fathers, your brothers, your you know their, their fathers. Stand for them and on their behalf, and let's stand on behalf of all the fathers uh, in the United States of America, in California, and uh, all over the world. Really, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just lay my hands and I just pray, reach out, Lord God, to all of our fathers. I pray specifically for our fathers in foreigners for Christ. Continue to blessing them continually. Continue to mold them in the way of a father's heart. Help them to see Jesus and thereby see you, Father God. See you, Abba. Let your heart be made known so that in their sphere of influence, they may also affect other fathers to have a father's heart. Lord God, we pray for all the fathers outside of our church who needs help, who needs the Spirit of God to mold them, to help them, to make them see Jesus and, and through Jesus see the Father. And Father, today, let every father be blessed. Let every knee bow and let every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord over all fathers, all over the world, whatever tribe, whatever nation, whatever ethnicity, Lord God, we pray for them in the name of Jesus. And I also pray for our church today, everybody. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for, Lord God, thank you for the miracle and healing for Joshua. Thank you for his heart. Thank you for, Lord God, the, the, the new beginning that you're uh, uh, ex allowing him to experience. And I thank you also. I heard that uh, uh, JJ is back in church. Thank you, JJ. Welcome back. You've always been in our heart. We've always prayed for you. And thank you so much. God bless you. And I pray that the, the, the face of God shine upon all of you, lifting up his countenance on all of you and giving you grace in the name of Jesus. Be blessed today. Amen.